Oh yeah, I sound great. <laughs> well, as long as you sound good. You sound good too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. So, um, I'll do my intros, right? Which mm-hmm. is just basically um, saying hello to the camera, and then we'll just get into it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to the Steve Walter Photo Podcast. Uh, season one, right? Season one. Season one. For now, season one. Everything is art. And uh, I want to give a few shout outs. I, I held up the two fingers, but I really mean three. So the first shout out is to my buddy Tom, who is coming in on Tuesday. Okay. I'm doing a lot of popping over here. I'm getting a lot of that. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, uh, let me tone that down You're a little bit. just popping off. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. So Tom, Tom is my buddy. Uh, I've known Tom for a few years. He's a musician. He basically created the, uh, the intro music that I use for this. He's also created okay. music for me that I've used in a, a project, a video project. That's the heat. It should go off in a second. Okay. Um, in a video project I created called 30 second exposure. We can talk about that in a minute, but thank you, Tom, for the music. Excited to have you on the podcast. Also, I wanted to thank Zach and Melissa. So Zach and Melissa are my Patreon sponsors. So mm-hmm. basically, for those that don't know, Patreon is a tipping and rewards website. If you want to help contribute to what I'm doing here, the podcast and the behind the scenes uh, photos that we do after the podcast, I'll put a little link right down here, patreon.com slash Steve Walter photo, pet peeve, number one. People call it a um, backslash. It's not. It's mm. a forward slash. And I know that some people try to make the argument, it's like, oh, it's like GIF and JIF. No, it's not. <laughs> one leans forward, one leans backward. So there is a difference. There is a right way. <laughs> yes, there is. Um, so those are my intros. My name's Steve Walter. Cass, introduce yourself. All right. Hello. Um, my name is Cassidy Christensen. I usually go by Cass. Um, I am a photographer working in Brooklyn right now. And I am was invited onto Steve's podcast for yeah. season one. Yeah, season one. Season one and the episodes, the episodes just kind of generate as I sit with people and decide, oh, I'm going to release this one, then this one, this one. There's really no order. It's, it's more just about having conversations. Kind of like what I was telling you before was that I ended up having conversations with people. And as we just started, I would say, oh, stop, don't talk because let's save it. Yeah, yeah. But what I would have in, in real life was conversations with people where I would say at the end of it, go, oh, we should have recorded that. Because, because you kind of start to uncover these, these similarities with people, um, especially artists, at least what I've found, and, and maybe you have too, where you start to realize that, you know, while we've connected through photography, there might be very other similar interests. The number one thing that I've found is that um, a lot of the photographers that I've met are also musicians. Are you a musician by no, any chance? I am You're not. not musically inclined no music. whatsoever. Cool. So I've that's just tried, done. But... Not going to happen. You have tried. What did you try playing? Or um, singing? P- oh, God. Do you hear this voice? There's singing nothing wrong with your voice. Not... You said that. There's nothing wrong with your voice at all. Um, well, singing was never in the cards for me. Okay. Um, <laughs> tried piano, and then I think I was like five years old, and basically cried like every week before oh, I had no. to go to the point where they were like, you know what, we're just, we're just going to not do Maybe this. Maybe we're done yeah, with this. Yeah, we're done with this. So that's one of those things, right, where like your parents kind of quote unquote made you go sort of thing? Or? Yeah, it was kind of like a general interest at first, and then it was like, wow, this is actually not at all something I enjoy no, doing. Right. This is a lot harder than I thought. Mm. <laughs> so. And it's crazy because I've, I've said this, I've shared this with people that I know that play piano. I'm thinking of my buddy John, um, and he plays it beautifully. We were at Sam Ash, uh, this is years ago. I was going to buy a set of headphones, and my buddy and I heard this beautiful piano, and we like turned the corner and looked like, who is this? And it's our buddy John. And I'm like, oh. dude, I'm like, what are you doing? He's <laughs> just like, come from? he's like, oh yeah, you know, I suck. And I was like, what do you mean you suck? <laughs> like, <laughs> and he was playing cast. He was playing like beautiful, like, like, um, uh, classical, like like compositional, just like be- oh like like crazy stuff, and I was like, dude, you don't suck. Shut up. And he basically was a kid that like has been playing piano since he was you know whatever eight years old, like a little kid. And then I think about that, and I'm like, oh, I wish my parents forced me to do that because I'd be so good now. But at the same time, I'd probably hate it as a kid. Yeah, the amount of things that my parents gave me access to do that I just resisted wholeheartedly. <laughs> and now I'm like, wow, I could have done all of these things and been great at them now right. in my adult you know, Isn't that adulthood. weird how you have that, that retrospective, or I think that's the word I want, J- just the... You look back, the hindsight, right? I don't know the word oh, exactly yeah. I'm looking for, but just to say like, oh, I wish I had done that mm-hmm. more. So the only thing for me as a kid that my parents uh, really exposed me to that I really enjoyed was art, just art classes. Like yeah. going, I remember going um, Saturday mornings to this random building 
and I would hang out with a bunch of other kids, and we would they would just have art projects that we would do. And I remember okay. um, I was very much, when I was younger, I was very much a loner, very much an introverted kid. Uh, not so much the you case and me now. Both. <laughs> um, so it was very like I didn't want anyone else to see what I was doing, and I kept everything to myself. And this was my project. And you know, if people were near me, it's not like I would kind of go like this, but like I wouldn't go out of my way to be like, "Hey, what to are you guys it. doing?" No, yeah, no, no. So I, I very much so you were the same. You kind of kept oh, it yeah. to you. I mean, that's I think why a lot of the things that my parents introduced me to, whether it was sports or different um, like instruments, whenever they were kind of team or group based, I had a really hard time with that because I didn't want other people to see what I was doing, you know, whether I was doing good or bad. I was just extremely shy when it came to that. So, you know, group gymnastics, no way, you know, like, you know, sailing or just literally anything that involved a group. It was, you know, team stuff. Yeah. yeah. I did. Yeah. They put me in, I played soccer. I didn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't play. I walked around on the field. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say, I was pretty horrible i kicked a ball like once or twice <laughs> i didn't play soccer uh baseball t-ball and i remember as a kid the coach put me in right field and i thought like oh right field is cool like nothing oh, and then i realized as later i was like no one ever hits it to right field that's why he put me there and i was like cool thanks guy i get it <laughs> yeah. and then it, i remember one other point where he had another right fielder with me and i was like oh cool i get to hang out with a guy and i was like nope because both of you suck <laughs> And the one time, the one, I'll never forget this. It's so crazy. I don't know how old I was, but I'll never forget it. A ball came to me, and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? The ball comes, it lands on the ground. I scooped it up, and I thought, am I like, yeah, I got it. And the guy was running to home, and I threw it from right field, like deep right field. I just tried throwing it home. Didn't throw it to the cutoff man, which you're supposed to do, because mm-hmm. it will get there more accurately and just faster. And I didn't do that. And then I realized, like, that's why he put me in deep right field. <laughs> yeah, that is why I am here. Because <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. As a little kid, I just, and I didn't care. It was oh, yeah. like, here's something to do after school. And yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. The, the coach's son was the pitcher, of course. <laughs> um, so of course. it was it was what it was. But yeah, sports in me, eh, mm-hmm. not so much. Not you. Yeah. And again, it just, it just comes back to, like, the stuff that's always made sense to me has been art. Just yeah. drawing, doodling, and, and just kind of playing with that stuff. You were the same? Yeah, I n- always wanted to be involved in the arts somehow. Mm. And, you know, my dad was always kind of trying to get me to do this and that. So it was definitely a couple of years of trying to find the right thing for me. You know, try, try it out, like sketching and drawing. I was terrible at it. Okay. Um, tried pottery. was equally terrible at it. Okay. And so it was kind of just several years of just different things that I tried and was like, wow, actually looking back, that was all I made were like cat dishes and (laughs) terrible drawings. And um, I think it was in seventh or eighth grade, my grandfather got me my first camera. Oh. And around that time too, it was kind of ridiculous to think about now, um, I started to kind of like not have great eyesight and you know had to sit closer towards the board and couldn't see this and that and i remember just looking through the camera and this is so corny but seeing things like crystal clear and composing it the way that i wanted to and the way that i like wanted to see it but couldn't um that's that's what kind of got me hooked how cool is it you said that was seventh eighth grade yeah oh how cool is that then to to have that call it epiphany or just this this vision right pun intended of like Mm. Oh, this looks cool, and you. So you you're building a connection literally just with that physical. Yeah. Oh, the viewfinder. That's cool. So you know, and ever since then, it was just whether I was walking around taking photos or photos of other, um, you know, friends. Like me and my friends would make like these little photo shoots in like sixth, seventh grade, and just like go all out, you know. Yeah. Do each other's makeup, this and that, and but it was a lot of fun. And that's cool. You know, that's kind of, photography's been the one thing for me that's kind of like stuck all of these years where where I've kind of like molded it into, you know, different things and, you know, just as my interests have kind of developed and stuff like that, um, it's kind of just been like the main constant that's cool. throughout. That's so. is, cool. Is there a specific genre of photography that you're really drawn to or just attracted to or that you just find yourself doing more? Uh, as of right now, I really enjoy um, telling stories, mm. and I've actually kind of started to deviate a little bit more into writing as well. Um, 
but stories as far as I like going into situations and kind of learning about a person and being able to kind of tell their story through yes. my photographs. So kind of like not a posed photojournalistic, but something kind of along that lines. Yeah. Where, you know, I've worked for a couple clients where they're like, hey, we have this amazing person. We want you to kind of like grab all the details about them, you know, so I'll go into their business or to, you know, their brand and kind of try to like identify the neat things and just learning about those people and like their struggles. And, you know, you kind of start to realize that everyone kind of goes through the same thing, you know, regardless of the field that they're in um so it's really kind of neat to be able to try to like document that and learn that's really cool because right as a as a storyteller um there was uh, sorry i'm kind of distracted um there was some i forget who i'm trying to remember who who published it but basically what they did was this was they took whatever it was six photographers something like that and they had one guy and they told each one of those photographers a different story about this guy yes, did you see that you know what I'm talking yes. about right the guy with the shaved head mm-hmm. one of them said he was for those who haven't seen it one of them said that like you know he was like he head of an accounting firm I'm just making these up but mm-hmm. like drastically different he just got out of prison yeah. he's a single dad so basically what they did was they didn't really have a conversation with the guy I don't think I think they just went in there and whomever said was like hey here's who you're photographing they went in there with a different and they photographed him differently because of who they perceived him to be. So now you're going into these scenarios, you're actually having a conversation with someone very similar to what we're doing, mm-hmm. right? We're having a conversation, we're about to take some pictures. So I'm gonna target those pictures towards our kind of our conversation, right? Um, so that's really interesting that you get to do that. So you're, you're telling the story kind of twice, right? Yeah. Verbally, but then also photographically. That's mm-hmm. really cool. How much time do you normally spend with someone? Is there any kind of average amount um, where you found success or? or? It, it kind of depends, you know, it's obviously going to be different if it's kind of like paid work versus kind of just for myself. Um, you of know, course. when it's for myself and it's someone that I'm really kind of clicking with, you know, I'll spend several hours, you know, even yeah. if it's just part of it only shooting, you know, just trying to get to know that person because sometimes the conversation before you start to photograph is just as important as like when you're photographing because you kind of have to make that person comfortable enough to show you like you know yes who they are and because i have always been like naturally very introverted and very shy this is something that like i really try to work on yeah because when your subject's not comfortable with you it shows and it doesn't matter like how good your lighting is or what you tell them to do like if they're uncomfortable it translates and it's just it's not going to be as strong of an image yeah um, it, well, especially, yeah, in, in portraiture. And that's, I, I love that you're saying that because I 100% agree with you because um, it, it's, as I've said it before for those listening, is it's this sort of trifecta. It's, it's the science, it's the art, it's the psychology. That's why mm-hmm. portraiture is fun. It's the science of knowing all your settings and your lighting and, and your inverse square law and your aperture, all that stuff. It's the art because it's art. I mean, it's a medium, right? And then the psychology, connecting with someone, making them feel comfortable, disarming them relating to them, recalling little bits on the story that you had, little jokes that came up, mm-hmm. repeating that back to them to get a laugh, to capture that laugh, right? Um, yeah, it's so, it's so cool. It's so interesting. Um, because y- you're then, you're, you're able to tell the story that you want to tell. Exactly. Um, or, or at least more so, you have a better understanding of who that person is. Yeah. So it translates, like you said, it, it shows up. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so seventh, eighth grade, you started shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, was that film, I take it? Or was that digital? Are you young enough for that to be digital? <laughs> I am young enough for that to be digital. Okay, cool. And now, unfortunately, um, you know, even in high school, they had classes for it, tried to sign up, and they had just switched over. So to digital, okay. Yeah. I unfortunately have never had the and, proper training with film. And I'm not, neither did I. I didn't. Okay. So I'm, I'm spoiled enough, but I didn't get into photography until I was a little bit older. Okay. Um, and... Uh, it's funny because film has, has sort of come back, right? There's been this resurgence of film. Yeah. And I definitely have very kind of specific feelings about that. Last time mm-hmm. Devon was on the podcast, um, I was talking about it. And I basically said, hey, if you're going to shoot film, like shoot medium format. Because that makes sense. Because it, it, try to, trying to access medium format in the digital realm is going to cost you a lot of money, even oh, just yeah. to rent it, right? So, but in film, I understand that. Because then it be, kind of becomes a little more art. And I still have, I have some old, I have an old Mamiya. 
Um, and I have some old 120 film, and one day I'll put it in there, but like, I really don't care. Like, I'm yeah. gonna shoot digital. I'm gonna shoot with my phone. This thing is amazing, <laughs> what this oh, does. Yeah. Um, one of the portrait sessions I did with the guy on the, uh, Robert Norman, I don't know if you listen to that podcast, but Robert Norman's a wedding photographer. He came on, and our whole photo shoot was done with this phone. Oh, wow. And I have the ability to connect this to my strobes, so mm -hmm. I was able to light it beautifully, but shoot it with a freaking iPhone. It was so cool. And the shots... If I didn't tell you it was shot with an iPhone, you wouldn't mm -hmm. know. Um, so that, I'm a digital guy. I'm full yeah. on, like, I love everything digital. Like, um, even just as a musician, like, I love playing with GarageBand on the iPad. Like, mm -hmm. that's where I'm going to go. And I have friends that are super analog. No, you got to plug into an amp, a tube amp, and you got to get these pedals or analog. I'm like, nope, I don't care about any of that stuff. <laughs> I want flexibility. I want convenience. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm at. So digital through and through. Oh, yeah. And I think, honestly, you know, people are so crazy about you know having the best of this and that and honestly it's like you can make uh, as you were just saying with you know your iPhone you can do so much with so little yeah and it's funny that you're saying that you hooked that up to a strobe because I actually did the same thing but with um, a disposable camera oh just to show like <laughs> yeah. you can get something that looks really good with something that's not a great you know medium to work with yeah so, you know and stuff like that it's just like it's fun and That's i've never it. been very gear oriented yeah i've always just been more so like whatever's going to get me to where i need to be you know it's kind of more important than like okay it needs to be like this lighting and this like modifier because i don't know i think you can do a lot with a little like i said a little and even to that point that you can you can do a lot with a little um that the gear doesn't matter. The gear has never mattered. In no. any area, the gear has never mattered. And it sucks that, as most artists, you kind of have to go through that phase of, oh, no, it does matter. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And then eventually realize it doesn't matter. It, it, it comes down to your experience, your knowledge. And when you'll have people, um, you know, I, I was shooting a, uh, a commercial gig one time, and I go in there with a camera, and I got a tripod, I'm setting up, and I'm doing interiors. And one of the guys, like from the sales office, comes over. Oh, I got the same camera. And I think in my mind, I'm like, why? Why do you? And it was a 5D Mark III. It wasn't like an amazing camera, but yeah. like a good camera. And I'm like, why do you have that camera? Like, just because? Yeah. Or are you actually using it? And he wasn't. Like, he showed me some of the pictures on his phone, and mm. the composition was crap. The light was crap. Like all, all of it. Mm. But they were high resolution, sharp images, which is great. And I mean, hey, get something that keeps you excited about that craft and all that. Please do that. But like. When you're like, oh, I got the same camera. It's like, okay, well, that doesn't mean anything. That, no, no. It just means you have the same piece of equipment. And, you know, if, if you give me a golf club, the same golf club you give Tiger Woods, right? I'm, he's the only person yeah. I can think of as a famous golfer. He's going to hit the ball way better than I will. Even if you give me a better club than he has. Yeah, it's not going to matter. It's, it's always been the case. So, yeah, gear, gear doesn't matter. But it also can matter, right? Like, if, if I give you the proper tools to, to create the image that you want, then you're able to fulfill your vision, right? Yeah. Um, so are you comfortable doing any kind of scenario in studio, out of studio, you know, in, in these places where you're talking about where you meet people, you're dealing with like crappy light and things like that, right? Oh yeah. You know, I mean, every situation is different. And even when, you know, you kind of tell the person what you want and they describe the location, like, okay, I have this and that. That's really cool. You get in there and the ceiling's <laughs> really low or it's so dark. Yeah. And, you know, part of you kind of talking to that person, you're also walking around being like, shit, what do I, you know, what am I going to do now? Like, it's so dark in here. How am I going to set this up? Yep. So, you know, it's kind of like stalling for time a little bit. Right. Yeah. And then even then you can use that as a conversation. You yeah. start talking with them. Cool. And as you're like eyeing the room, you're like, I can't do anything with this. <laughs> yeah. What Let's am I going to do? Let's actually go outside. <laughs> yeah. And, and there is, right, yeah, yeah, you know what, it's not that bad out, let's go outside. Yeah. Um, it, it is interesting how um, the more and more you do that, the more and more comfortable you feel, right, walking into any random room and saying, okay, I can make pictures here, right? And I think there are even, you know, you can sign up for workshops where it's like um, taking good photos in, in bad places. And I've even seen later, uh, recently, sorry, not later, uh, the hashtag of um, uh, people taking, you know, portraits in, in crappy locations or there was that one I don't know if you saw the article of the woman that did the shoot at Lowe's yes yes where, where like arguably it's this crappy location but mm -hmm. like I made good photos and 
I don't know. I kind of have thoughts on that too, and and how it was. Um, yeah. yeah, just because you throw the focus out doesn't mean that. No, yeah. I mean they were they were okay yeah. images. They were they were fine. Like I would have I would have rather had a soft box on them, lighting them, or I don't know, doing something else. But it, it's the idea that hey, I can make something that looks pretty, right? Yeah, pretty no matter where. No matter yeah. where I am. Well, here's the thing: if she shot those at f eight, those would be garbage photos <laughs> yeah. because you had to shoot them at one four because you had to blow out the background because otherwise mm-hmm. it would just be like well, this is stupid. But it's kind of that idea, and, and challenge yourself to say, okay, I'm going to go into this scenario and try to make good pictures in a bad, otherwise, location. Yeah. So that's good. Um, if you could talk to me about your, your journey and your experience with uh, New York, because I know okay. that recently you, you posted, so like you were saying, that you've been getting into writing more, um, mm-hmm. and it shows in, in the post that you had. But if you could, share with me a little bit about that. Okay. Yeah, I I think I'm rounding on to my second year of living in New York. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I kind of waited a little bit after um, school to kind of move, and it was kind of just by chance. Um, friend of a friend, you know, had kind of had an opening, and, you know, at that point I was just like, you know what, I have to do this. Yeah. And, in their apartment? Uh, they were looking for a new apartment. Cool. So, um you know, and that was kind of my in with it. And, you know, I told myself, I saved up and told myself, okay, if I can't make this work via freelance in the first like three months, then I'm going to start to look for a job. Job. And, you know, and that hasn't, you know, knock on wood, that hasn't happened yet. Um, That's great. You know, I've been completely freelance, and there's definitely been some times it's been very interesting because, um, you know, as everyone knows, it's very expensive to live in New York. Oh, yeah. Um, So, you know, but you kind of do what you can, and it's kind of funny to hear certain friends that will complain about, you know, their full-time job and how they're only getting this, and, you know, oh, man, like, I don't know how I'm going to do that, and it's like... You know, here's the same theme going on as you can do a lot with a little. Yeah. Where, you know, my first year there, it's like, you know, I don't know what I was making, but, you know, <laughs> I was able to kind of just like do my thing. Right. Um, you know, and that involved a lot of hours of just like pitching to new clients yes. and trying to work on my like social media just to kind of, um, get myself to a point where, you know, people can kind of find me through there. Yep. That's Um, huge. That's everything. Yeah. So it's really kind of taken this long to start to get uh, repeat clients and word of mouth out there. And, you know, and I knew that it wasn't going to be something that happened right away. Nope. Um, So, you know, at this point, it's um, kind of just like a mixture of everything. So, you know, when people are like, Oh, what do you do? It's kind of like, well, it's like seven different things right now. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, I'm able to kind of keep flexibility with, you know, my working hours and stuff like that. So I don't, you know, I don't ultimately mind. So seven things, right. Um, you you like kind of a jack of all master of none in the photographic world, Mm -hmm. would you say? Yeah, I'd say, because I'm starting to kind of veer more towards writing. Um, okay. You know, I'm concentrating less on building up, you know, a certain type of brand with um, some things. Like originally I was going to kind of really push towards doing weddings. Yes. And, you know, I mean, that's still my bread and butter. Okay. But yeah. um, that's kind of taken a little bit of a back seat this past year. And now, you know, I kind of only really work for other people or if the jobs come in to me, you know, I'm not so much actively looking anymore. Same. Because yep. I'm starting to realize that, you know, working freelance, it's exhausting. Yep. And trying to build up a career in writing as well as trying to build up a career in like, you know, lifestyle imagery, which is kind of my main focus right now, as well as trying to stay afloat with photo- with wedding photography, you know, each of those you have to pitch and market and yeah. shoot and schedule and, you know, it's three full-time jobs right there. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, you know, so it's kind of getting to the point where it's like, okay, you know, like you kind of know what you want to do right now. So let's kind of let some of these other things go. So it becomes less, yeah, less of 
um, you know, jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah. You know, now I'm trying to find what I can master. Yeah. And, and I appreciate you sharing that because I think there are a lot of people listening, right? Photographers, hopefully, mm-hmm. but artists in general, where that's, that's a common story. Or, or there's just, I don't know, this kind of thought, right, that um, people, when I hear people say, like, I'm going to make a viral video, I think about it and I'm like, well, obviously you're thinking about it all wrong because you're trying to make a viral video. You can't try to make a viral video. You make a video, you put it out there and then it becomes viral, right? Yeah. Like if you're trying to do it, when I just think about like energy, I'm a big believer of energy and just how energy exists and, and what you put out is what you receive. And like, if you're putting out this energy of I'm going to make a viral video, well, no, you won't. It probably won't be viral. Yeah. Like maybe a bunch of people will see it, but it, it's not going to be massive, right? So when I think about that sort of instant gratification, and I hate to use that term because so many people overuse that term, but I think there is a lot with that, that, oh, I have good content. I have a lot of followers on social media. Why should I start booking jobs? Well, not necessarily. Not if you're not showing up for, uh, or showing up to events, or targeting specifically the demographic that you need or that you want to, to have hire you. And if you're not posting that exact work that you want to kind of showcase for people to hire you. So as you said, there's a lot. Being freelance and being your own business owner is awesome, but you're everything, right? You're the yeah. accountant, you're the marketer, you're the producer, you're the photographer, you're the editor, right? You're everything. Yeah. Um, so it becomes really overwhelming. And, and I like that you kind of shared that, right, you, you sort of find your way and say, okay, well, yeah, I started doing all this. And then I kind of narrow it down to say, oh, this is really where I want to be. And, and I'm kind of finding mm-hmm. myself that way too. Like I, I photograph weddings. Um, and I think that's sort of the natural path for a photographer, especially in the business world, yeah. because that's where, I mean, that's, that business is never going away. People will always get married. Oh yeah. No matter what. They will always get married. So there's always a business there. Uh, a buddy of mine that I've known, uh, for years, I used to work at a marketing agency with him. He said, um, laundromat, people always need clean, clean clothes, mm-hmm. open up a laundromat. You'll, you'll be a millionaire. And I, I thought about it and I was like, that's stupid. I don't want to, but wait a second. You're right. People will need clean clothes and they don't always have a washer dryer, right? I imagine living in New York City, right? You don't necessarily have a yeah, washer I dryer. Say, I am definitely contributing to the laundromat, you go to laundromat business. Mat. I used to do it all the time, and, <laughs> I, and like I would, I remember sitting there being like, "He was right. There's a lot of people here. I pumped in a lot of quarters." So anyway, um, you know, thinking of that, it, it's it's interesting when it's sort of glamorized, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, this is a, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be fun. But then you realize it's like it's so much work. Um, which is cool, but then being able to say, okay, well, instead of me doing all of these things, let me just do this. And okay, maybe I'll still do some of this, right? Like you said, if someone calls you to do a second shooting job, cool, of course, like I'll, I'll take that check, you know? Yeah. Um, but not actively putting in a lot of energy and seeking that work. And again, you're putting out the energy, right? That I'm not going to seek that work. I want to seek this work. Mm-hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah, it's... It takes time. It's definitely taking time and... You know, just for anyone that's listening and kind of just like struggling with that where, you know, they're kind of doing a bunch of different things. And I definitely felt it for a while where, you know, I was doing so many things and I was like, I'm not concentrating on anything. And like, where is this leading this and that? But I had spoken with an artist um, recently and, you know, she was more so like mixed media and stuff like that. But it was really inspiring where she was basically saying like everything is um, cyclical in life where Mm. it's, you know, it comes full circle and, you know, some things that I've done, like the most bizarre jobs or that are just some jobs that are just like totally unrelated, you know, it kind of, I've been able to take pieces here and there and contribute that, contribute that to where I am now. And, you know, whether it's like, learning how to have the confidence to speak to clients because, yeah. you know, you were managing someone else's business or you were doing that. So just because you're in like a certain point in life doesn't mean that it's not going to help you towards, you know, kind of what you're doing. That's, oh, I love that you just said that. That's so, that's so true. Um, and I think, oh, that's so true. I love that because, so I'm, I'm immediately connected with what you just said there, because when you think about jobs that you have, maybe you're in a job right now that you absolutely hate. Cool. I get it. Mm-hmm. We've all been there. We've all been there. And I encounter those people on a daily basis. When you encounter someone and they're just rude to you and they don't care. And then I think in my mind, I'm like, dude, at least pretend to like your job, right? <laughs> like, I get it. It sucks. I, I, I wouldn't want to be doing that either. But like, pretend maybe. Mm-hmm. So again, for those people listening, like, if your job sucks, like, I get it. It sucks. So try to make it not suck by 
trying to kind of pull out those things. Like you said, maybe if you're working for someone else and your job is to talk to people on the phone, well, make that experience so good so that when it comes time for you to communicate with someone on your own, you've developed those skills. Oh, yeah. And maybe even reach out to somebody at this job that maybe you hate and say, hey, I'm working on this. Like, could you maybe give me some feedback on the things that I'm doing here? Or, hey, I, I had this, this, I mean, who knows, depending upon where you work, they might be like, what? No, leave me alone. Go do your job. Like, get out of my face. Or some people might say, oh, okay, yeah, hey, you, you're kind of showing initiative and you know what? You're working for me, so obviously I want to give you that positive feedback or negative feedback, right? So I, th- I think that's interesting to, you know, the, the cliche, make the most of things, right? And things that I found to be cliche, are cliche because they're kind of true. And I know that's cliche to say, but it's because it's kind of true. So um, that's really interesting. So, right, being able to kind of develop those skills so that now when it comes time for you to talk to those clients to say, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. And I also want your money. Um, (laughs) You're more comfortable with that, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. So you said you're in Brooklyn now? Yeah. Is it amazing there? Is it Uh, awesome? Because, sorry, I cut you off. Uh, Like, Everyone loves Brooklyn. And at the times that I've been in Brooklyn, it's mm-hmm. awesome. Is it that awesome? Like living there? I mean, I'm still there. It's so, dope. yeah. You know, I thought about it on the way here where, like I said, I almost moved here or moved and tried to find a studio space in here and went back and forth before, you know, my move to New York of do I want a studio space in Connecticut? Do I want to stay around here? You know, because this is where I grew up. Yeah. Um, And it was kind of just, like I said, kind of just by chance that was asked to, you know, become a third roommate. And yeah, it's, I really had a period of, I think like a couple months when I was in New York and just walking around and was like, I can't believe I live here, you know, just being in Brooklyn and, you know, even going to different cities, I have a hard time. Like I like them, but I'm like, okay, well, you don't have your 24 hour bodegas. (laughs) You don't yeah, yeah, have, yeah. you know, improv shows or like some random thing happening every night. So, yeah. You know. And that my, so my cousin lives in, in Brooklyn. Um, and she, I went to go visit her one time and, and we went out and there was, I don't even, it started at like 11 or 12. There was like a bazaar or whatever it was. I forget where we were exactly. But like, mm-hmm. she was like, oh yeah, we go to the, uh, call, call it bazaar, call it a carnival. I don't know what it was, but like. You literally just like walk through this like plywood door entrance and like you went in and then like there's all these video games, there's a band playing, there's a bar. And I was just like, where, how did this, where did this come from? It just showed up. We just walked through this doorway, this random like rickety old plywood door. And then we're there and and there's hundreds of people hanging out at like 11 o'clock at night, like it's two o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, oh, okay. So this is Brooklyn. Cool. Yeah. 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 And it was neat. It was awesome. I mean, it was just a, it was a cool experience. I mean, not to mention the fact that just the people that you encounter, right? There's definitely an energy there, right? When you talk oh, yeah. about energy. Um, and just the scenery. I mean, just, just being inspired to be creative, right? When you open up your window, depending upon what your view is, it might be a brick wall. Very true. Or it might be a beautiful landscape. Um, like it's, you're there and you're like, oh, this is cool, right? It feels good. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's why I kept coming back. Um, You know, I'd go in for my internship, but then find reasons to kind of just go in for the weekend or, you know, visit a friend before I was living there. And it really is an incredible experience. And anyone that's considering it definitely should at least try it for a year. Yeah. Um, You know, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I definitely think that New Yorkers are like the strongest testament to people that kind of make do with what they have. Yeah. Because when you're there, you start to realize, you know, the strange spaces like you were talking about that you walk into that are transformed into something totally different. And it's the same thing with, you know, the work ethic there too, where, you know, I've worked on plenty of sets before inside of people's apartments that are, you know, the size of a bathroom or, you know, it's just, you kind of make do and you clamp things here or put things here. And, you know, especially if you're shooting um, something out on the street, like you can't put a light stand down in some areas. So you have to hold it or you have to, it's kind of neat to see the energy behind how people create and have to be a lot more crafty sometimes, Yeah, you know, because you can't just like set all your stuff up or do it, you know, hours beforehand. It's kind of like you get there and you're like, okay, guys, we have to do this really quick. There's right. going to be a crowd in a second or, right. you know, someone's going to come and like stop us. Kick so, us out. Yeah. You know, 
there's a lot more you have to think about and having that is kind of exciting and you know it can get lonely at times you know especially if you're a freelancer but if you kind of push yourself to go to networking events or to different things you know you can kind of find your group of people very easily yeah and and that's what i found um and i love that because you're right like as much as you connect with people online, um, there's like I've I've we've exchanged conversations mm-hmm. online. Like I've, that's how I met you, right? Um, I think it, it must have been Instagram, or maybe I don't think it was Facebook. But Jet Plane Gene, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, that's how I met you. But then there's something completely different when you meet someone in the real world. You have a conversation with them, or you network with a group of people, and then you're right. You kind of find your groups that you you're going to socialize with and continue to you know connect online, right? But there is just you can't replace that in person, right? Yeah. And and even when you think about um, digital, I was talking about this with, you know, prints and film. Like when you, when you have film and you have prints and you hand someone a print or you hand someone a business card, right? Or you shake someone's hand, you look them in the eye. You can't replace that in the digital world. It just doesn't exist. So you're able to create this impact and, you know, the, the cliche expression of it's all about who you know. Yes, it is. It yeah. is about who you know. It's very true. And someone that you know online is not the same as someone that you know in the real world, right? Yeah. Um, so that's great. And that's where I found um, photo meets, photo walks. I don't know if you've participated in any photo walks, anything like I that. Haven't. Um, I haven't. I was exposed to those years ago. I bumped into some dude and he was showing me pictures. And this was, I think, right when Instagram came out. And he told me he was going to a photo meet. He was meeting up with a bunch of strangers to take pictures. And I thought, that's real weird. <laughs> and now it's like, oh, no, that's not weird at all. That's fantastic. So um, I used to uh, contribute and, and be like a... Um, yeah, contributing member of a group called Project Shutter, mm-hmm. and basically, it was this way to kind of coordinate these meets with a whole bunch of creatives, specifically photographers, but also models, makeup artists, yeah. you know, videographers, things like that, to say, hey, let's come hang out and let's just make some stuff. And we would get pretty big crowds of people just hanging out for an afternoon, just making pictures and then sharing them online and then connecting after. And that's the other thing too that I found was that I connected with a lot of people to say, hey. I really like the shots that you had. Like, would you want to come assist with me on the shoot? Like, mm-hmm. and I saw the work ethic that you had and, and y- you make these personal connections. And now there's a group, um, the photo plug. Um, okay. There's a photo meet coming up on the 24th of March and I'm actually going to be sponsoring it. Mm-hmm. So the sponsorship is basically um, my way of contributing for them to kind of have something to, to get people to come show up for the meet. Now they haven't had any trouble getting people showing up. We, they did one in Hartford and there was 180 people that oh, showed wow. up. Oh, wow. It was like a, it was, I mean, I wouldn't even, it wasn't a, it was like a mass of people, like a yeah. swarm of people hanging out, just taking pictures. And it was like, oh, this is really cool. And talk about an energy, right? Um, so I'm going to be sponsoring, uh, so I, I do uh, lighting workshops. So I host and conduct lighting workshops in here. So I'm going to be giving away a ticket to say, hey, guys, for those of you that are really into this stuff, like, come on, let's come hang out. And that way I can kind of sponsor them. So. Photo meets are fantastic. I highly recommend it, especially for those that are sort of in a creative funk yeah. and you want to kind of break out of that. Or if you just want to practice with, say, a new lens, right? When we talk about gear, like if you did buy a piece of equipment and you really need to know that, you should go out on a photo meet. So, so I show up with lighting and I, I kind of work with different modifiers and I say, cool, the whole day I'll shoot with like a 50 and this modifier and that's it. What kind of images can I make out of that? Like, I'm not going to show up with a 24 to 70, a 70 to 200, a strap, yeah, a so flash. Yeah, things that you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do something that I haven't done before. I like that. That's actually really smart. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty great, too, like you said, about people that are kind of in a slump. Um, yeah. Just try to force yourself to do yes. as many collaborative things or just meetups or anything like that you know I definitely know I need to do more of it just because sometimes being around that energy you know I love working in coffee shops mainly just because I love being around other people you know seeing them in a meeting or seeing them on their laptop you know it's so much better just than, being productive yeah yeah you know, I'm like okay yeah I gotta do the same thing that's uh, that's funny you're right even just seeing someone like even when I see people um, so in New Haven, you know, a lot of photo shoots happen downtown and I'll see a group of people like if they're doing a photo shoot and I'm like, Oh, I just want to watch what you guys are doing. Like, I want to be a part of this. Like yeah. I'll hold the reflector. Yeah, I'll do I don't know who you guys are. Yeah, of something. course. Can I just do something? Yeah. It's funny when you see that, like you just get inspired to want to create stuff. Yeah. And I think there's something. So like I was telling you before with the Patreon, right? I have the behind the scenes for those that, um, uh, it's one of the rewards, right? Depending upon the tier. Mm-hmm. 
And there is something interesting about that. When you watch someone else photograph, you get inspired to take pictures. Oh, yeah. It's like when I was a kid and I used to skateboard. We used to watch skate videos and then go, okay, let's go skate now. Because like, <laughs> I'm pumped up to go do that five set. And even though I couldn't ollie down a set of stairs, but like, not five anyway, like give me like two or three. But it was, it was the same kind of energy of like, I just watched this thing. Now I'm motivated to go do it. So I think there is, um, there's definitely something there. And then it's really nice when you can actually be surrounded by a group of people and everyone's taking pictures. It can be overwhelming at times. Yeah. But at the same time, like if you kind of just keep it in a little tight, and especially if you, you start connecting with a few people, like you guys kind of magnetize and then you just hang out and you just take pictures with your friends. So yeah, I would definitely recommend if you haven't ever gone on a photo meet, just, just go. I mean, e- even if you, yeah, just go. Go with a camera, go with one lens and just see what the energy is like. Just walk around. Because there's got to be a ton happening in Brooklyn, in Queens, oh, yeah. Manhattan. Like, there definitely are. There's uh, the big one, the real big one is uh, Pursuit of Portraits. I don't know if you mm-hmm. follow them, but they host gigantic meets. I mean, to the point where people that have attended and I've had conversations with them, they're like, it's almost kind of pointless because there's so many, so like hundreds of people showing up in Central Park. And it's like, oh boy. And, and what ends up happening from what people tell me is that like everyone meets and they kind of have this conversation and then like everyone disperses. So it would be hard to navigate 300 people around Central Park. There's just no way. No, there's no way. Some people are going to go here. Some people are going to go there. And, but it's just cool that everyone's brought together in this one spot. And then usually what happens after, which is neat, is the hashtagging that follows, right? So you go there mm-hmm. and you see um, you know, two or three models that you, you see over and over again. Or maybe hopefully 20 models, 30 models show up and you get a bunch of people there posing. And you see everyone's sort of interpretation of that same scene with that same person. That's my favorite thing to see. I love just, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's Seeing so cool. Seeing all the cool. different, you know, styles of how people kind of see that situation or model or any of that. Yeah, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, that video of that person mm-hmm. that they were told, here's who this person is. How are you going to photograph him? Um, so I think that's, that's really, really cool. And yeah, they're... they're uh, they're really interesting because you meet a whole bunch of people. The one thing that I find, and, and I've shared this as a, another little pet peeve, is that when I meet people, um, I'll get introduced to them by their first name, but I don't know who they are after the fact because on their Instagram page, it just says like what their hashtag or their, their um, handle is, right? So they never use their first name. So when I think of you, right, I think of Jet Plane Jean, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, well, no, that's right. Your name's Cass or Cassidy, right? Mm-hmm. Cassidy. So it's like, in my mind, it's like, oh, it's Jet Plane, Jet Plane Jean's coming down. It's like, no, that's not her real name. But so when you meet people and they'll yeah. say like, hey, my name's Kyle. I'm like, I don't know who Kyle is. And they'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm at Photo 67. You're oh, like, Photo oh, 67. What's right. up, dude? Yeah. yeah. Because I never know your name. Mm-hmm. So like, that's like a pet peeve of mine that I have. So that's why for me, it's real easy. Steve Walter photo. Like, it's just yeah. there. And even underneath, Steve Walter. Like, if you didn't already guess it. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's just Yeah, I do that with funny. my regular uh, photography page, and I thought I put it on my jet plane Jean because people always, you know, when they and send you me emails. Did. You probably did. They're always like, hey, Jean, and it's like, no, that's my <laughs> middle name, so I'll no. do Cassie Jean. I was just about said, to ask yeah. you where that came from. Oh, so that's your middle name. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so. And the jet plane is traveling, yes? Because you, yes. just, you just got back from Europe. Yes. How, how long were you? So thank you again for coming. Like <laughs> literally, course. Like plane landed 20 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> right. That's how important I am, guys. So <laughs> if I invite you on this podcast, you need to be here. Um, no, but seriously, thank you so much again. So, yeah, of course. So what were you doing in Europe? Um, I was kind of just invited on a last minute kind of whirlwind trip. Um, I had a friend that was attending uh, Berlin Ale. Berlin, I'm not sure how to say it, but it's okay. a Berlin fil- film festival. Oh, cool. So, um, you know, she was going to go see the world premiere of Isle of Dogs by Wes Anderson. Cool. Um, and a few other films and, you know, had another friend that was going, but kind of had just asked me, you know, she's like, hey, I think I'm kind of just going to be here by myself a little bit. Uh, would you want to come? And I think that people that know me at this point kind of realize like, okay, well, you need to like make sure you're serious about me coming because I will say yes. Because <laughs> I'm coming. To, yeah. yeah like, I'll be there. And that's what I told her. I was like, I'm going to give you some time just to like really think about it. <laughs> Do you want me there for two weeks with you? Because um, yeah. I'm going to go look at flights tonight. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of made it into this whole kind of trip um, and I kind of extended it a little bit past Berlin. But yeah, cool. we did. 
Berlin. We did a weekend in Poland. Um, we went to go see this uh, David Lynch exhibit, cool. which was amazing. Um, he, it was like over 400 pieces of his work. Oh, um, wow. This like tiny little town in Poland. Like it wasn't near anything. Just it a was, random spot. Yeah, yeah, it was my first time going, and it was just like, yeah, you know, I'll go with you. It's cheap enough to go. Yeah. Um, and then I flew over to Dublin for a few days. Awesome. Um, and then I had a layover, which was weird because you actually backtracked to um, Zurich, Switzerland. Okay. And then flew back to New York. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a lot of jumping around, but. Yeah, and that's so I did I um, I did a trip or a photo trip in Europe a couple years ago, and the cool thing about Europe is that it's so easy to like hop around. But then the frustrating part about it is that like you're constantly just hopping around. Yes. So like everything was like so we were when people say like how was your vacation? I was like, it was not a vacation. We were <laughs> no. up at 3.30 in the morning to hop on this train to then ride it directly over to here to make sure that we caught this little flight that went from here to here. Like, And it was awesome. It was amazing. Um, so I I, um, I did a photo project with my cousin. Um, okay. I don't know if I... He never said don't talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> um, but basically, the, the, the assignment, call it, or, or the project was photographing uh, cathedrals and graffiti. Okay. So we went and we did... Um, uh, Belgium, we did Germany, we did Spain, we did France, and we did um, Italy. Oh, wow. So we hit all these different spots in a matter of six days. Oh my God. So when people are like, how was your vacation? I was like, dude, that was not, that a, was that not was, a vacation. That was a job. Like That was a project, <laughs> but it was awesome. Yeah. Um, so I, I can I can relate to an extent that like you're there and it's this this overwhelming like, oh my God, this is amazing. Had you been to Europe before? Yeah. Or was it, yeah. Oh, you have. Okay. So even then. So for me, it was like, oh my God. But for you, maybe a little I less. I mean, these were all places that I hadn't been before. But they're all new spots, so, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So so the experience, maybe less so, but the actual locations mm -hmm. um, were great, yeah. Um, take a lot of pictures. Oh, yeah. Just so many pictures, just an overwhelming amount. Yeah, and, you know, it's going to take me forever to go through them. I'm still yeah. going through past trips, um, photos. Just it's so because, difficult. Yeah, you get overwhelmed. And I think... Uh, one of the things I've been trying to actively do because, you know, as a photographer, you're just constantly looking around at stuff, being overwhelmed because you're there for the first <laughs> yeah. time, trying to figure out how to compose it, trying to figure out how to put a person in there to like show perspective. Yep. And I've been trying to take moments to kind of just like exist and not photograph and yeah. just kind of like look around for a second before I dive right back into it. Right. Because, you know, I mean, you think about it, even if you're not shooting film, you know, you're going to photograph on your camera, you're going to try to put someone in there, you're going to do it on your phone, you know, do something for social media. Yep. Um, you know, sometimes I'll do like Instax or disposable camera too. So it's, yep. you know, several different things of the same thing. And of the same scene. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's overwhelming and, you know... There's some times where I've looked back at trips or certain places I've been to and, you know, looked at the photos and been like, oh, my, I can't believe I went there, yeah. you know, because I didn't have that experience that at that point because I was so concentrated on getting the right shot and getting this shots. and that, you know. Yeah. That's a real thing for sure, right, is to just sit and breathe. Yeah. Put down your camera, put down your phone and just, okay, cool, I'm here. Yeah. Um, I, I took a photo trip with my, uh, actually it was my, my, um, uh, bachelor party. Okay. My, my, it was very untraditional. Um, I, I went on a photo trip with my brother and my father and we went to the Grand Canyon, went to Arizona. So we okay. did Grand Canyon, we did Horseshoe Bend, we did Antelope Canyon, like we did all these kind of spots. Right. And it was that, and it was just a really, you know, it was a special trip for us because it was, I was with my dad who was a photographer and like he inspired me to get into photography, right? And then like my brother who was my second shooter on wedding. So mm -hmm. like we were just three guys just taking pictures, just full on photo trip. And we've done it um, before we did the eclipse together. So it was just awesome. So I'm there and I'm not only like the scenery, but just there with my dad and my brother just to be like, I'm here. This oh, is that's cool. Awesome. This is cool. And and so I think that's really important to do, like you're saying, is like just be there in the moment. Yes, take all the pictures. Pick it up right after and then and then do your boomerangs and do your panoramas, do all that stuff, right? But just be there, be present. Um and even sometimes that's cool when I, I think about that when I'm on a photo meet and it's cool to just like look around and be like, there's like a hundred people here just taking pictures. Like this is really cool. And, and I think, again, I go back to saying like the energy. Mm -hmm. That's when you sort of embrace that energy and just being present. Um, 
So that's cool. Sorry, I get real serious right there. But it was, I mean, it's one of those things where, where you think about photography and it's just so easy to pick up the phone and take a picture and you end up like living through that screen, right? Yes. yes. And I know a lot of people will make this sort of um, discussion when you go to a concert. It's like, yeah, put down your phone. Like, take a couple pictures, mm-hmm. post on social media, let people know, like, you're having a good Friday night. Of course. Exactly. Always do that. <laughs> but keep the phone in your pocket. Because the reality is, and what everyone says is, what are you going to do with that stuff after? Exactly. Nothing. Maybe you'll show it once or twice. Maybe. The sound quality is going to be garbage. It'll be okay. The photos will be okay. Mm-hmm. But that's it. Delete them. You don't need them. Or just be there. That's the band. You love that band. Go see that band. Yeah. You know, and I mean, no one likes when you post like seven, you know, nope. concert videos in a row. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, you're like, okay, let me just click through these because yeah. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm yeah. not going to watch it. I'm I not get there, it. You know, and it's not. Yeah, I wasn't there. It's no fun for me. Yeah. I actually, I don't like. I don't like recorded live music, like an album by, like, say, even the Beatles. Love the Beatles. Beatles are great, but like. A live album by the Beatles? I have no interest in listening no, to that. not at all. I want the studio, because that's when you're going to be at your best. Yes. I know that sounds so awful to say, but it's not. That's how I like my music. Yeah. I, I like it refined. Totally okay. Yeah. You know? They spent hours in the studio for a reason. Yeah. So I want to listen to that version. Yeah. So. Or if I'm there and the Beatles are in front of me, that's the version I want. Exactly. Don't play the studio stuff, because <laughs> yeah. I want to hear you now. But I don't want to hear it recorded after, and definitely not from your cell phone. No. No, so um, so traveling for you has been an important part of your life, I would imagine, from jet plane gene, right? Like yeah. That's kind of in there. So that's cool, because you get to have different experiences um, that you can then share through story, right, through written word, mm-hmm. but then also photographically. Yeah, no, it's something I've started to get a lot more into, um, and I've kind of picked up the pace on traveling a lot more. Um, yeah. It's kind of become more of a priority. Cool just because you know there's so much out there and it's kind of overwhelming to think like okay you know there's some people that will stay in their hometown all of their lives and never go anywhere and that is totally okay but that's not the life that i want to lead yeah and you know it's i always have to laugh like of course i've had this epiphany like after i've moved to new york the most expensive place to you know (laughs) stay and rent and now i want to also travel all these other places right right (laughs) you know it um right wouldn't it be great if you're living in a dirt cheap place and then you could be like oh i have all this money for travel now exactly you know i couldn't have done this when i was living at my parents house right 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 the perfect time to (laughs) do it yeah no rent (laughs) that would have been cool yeah but i guess if anything right like it's it's just going to shape you more as a person right as a human to say like okay yeah I really got to work to do this exactly and it's not just going to be given so you're not going to take it for granted I guess is what I'm getting at like if you're living at home with your parents and you had no rent and you just traveled you might just be like oh, I'm going to go everywhere but not appreciate the same way you would as if you were working and saying I'm earning this and oh, I have yeah. the choice like do I want to buy this new lens or do I want to go to Europe like I'm going to go to Europe because that experience is going to be more meaningful and more impactful than this new updated version of a lens I'm just making it out of randomly. Like you said, you're not a big gear head, right? Yeah. So. Oh yeah, no, that's that's a real thing where, you know, I've started to kind of equate certain things, whether they're just like small purchases to, okay, well, I can buy this makeup or I can, you know, this is a meal in Thailand. Um, right. You know, or this is, you know, a night in this place or that place. And, you know, people constantly are asking me, like, how do you, you know, how are you paying for all of this? Or how, you know, I would love to do that, but, like, I have no money, this and that. And it's like, yeah, well, when you order something off of Amazon every other week, you know, you're eating out constantly. You're, Mm -hmm. you know, spending money on, like, different memberships. It's a lot of unnecessary stuff that you kind of are choosing to pay for. Yep which could be put towards travel and you know neither is the right way but you know these are things that i actively choose not to do so i can pay for things you know when i'm abroad yep like you said actively you're actively choosing to say well amazon prime is great but do i actually take full advantage of that i'm just using that as an example you might be like i love amazon prime (laughs) Uh, because i love amazon prime it's fantastic it's great yeah everyone should have amazon prime but Let's say it's something else like um, like a music like Spotify or Apple Music, right? You might be like, well, I already have a bunch of music. Like, I don't need all of the music always for you know. So I could save ten bucks a month, or I can cut out this. I can cut out this. Yeah. I can cut out this. Everyone who has a gym membership that they don't use, I kind of use it. I kind of <laughs> use gonna it. Say, yeah. yeah, I need to get back into it, but but it's one of those things where like you realize that 
well, yeah, I could cut out a bunch of stuff and then have potentially a lot more money. The eating out thing, that's huge, yeah. man. It will, especially in New York, because I'm sure, mm-hmm. like you said, 24 hour bodegas, like you're going around, or just all the restaurants that you would want to go to. You take a cab or you take an Uber and you take another Uber and then you go get a meal and then you got to take an Uber back and grab a couple of drinks. Oh, yes. You know, before you know it, you just spent $80 in one night and you're like, ah, that's a lot of money. You oh, do yeah. that three, four nights a week, that's a lot of money. Yeah, people do not realize. And really, my first year was just walking everywhere. I barely took, you know, yeah. Ubers. Honestly, like sometimes I'd skip out on taking subways just to save, you know, the two, three bucks, which sounds crazy, but, you know, it adds up. Yep. Um, you know, and I'd make a lot of meals at home. You know, I would skip going to bodegas or like pricey events. Yeah. And, you know, that ultimately kind of saved me. Um, you know, and doing all that stuff, you kind of realize like what you can live without. And, you know, I don't think you need to totally deprive yourself. You know, if there's certain habits that you really enjoy having, you know, then by all means, like go for it. But if it's just certain unnecessary things, like, you know, should I spend the 15 bucks on Ubering or should I just take the subway? You know, it's just right. kind of like pick and choose after a while. You really do need to kind of weigh that stuff. I mean, it's, it's like everything in life. It's balance, right? It's this balance of, of what is it that you really want to do, um, now? And then what is it maybe that you want to do later? Um, I realized I was doing this a lot during the podcast. I don't know why, but I just noticed that I like, I was holding my hand (laughs) like this a whole lot. Sorry. I just totally distracted myself like a, like a dog. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this anyway. Um, this represents so many things. (laughs) Um, <laughs> so it, it is when you think about that, right? And and then you start to recognize. So people are like, "Well, well, Cass, how how are you doing this?" It's like, "Well, it's not that hard." Or it's like when you when you mm-hmm. tell someone, you know, "How'd you lose all that weight?" It's like, "You know exactly how I lost this weight." Yeah. Take a guess what I did. Mm-hmm. You think I did diet and exercise? Yep, that's what I did. That's why exactly. I lost all that weight. And it's it like, wasn't overnight, you know. No. You diet and exercise for a while, or you saved up for a while, yep. you know. And that's how I went to Europe. It's not like exactly. I just came across like, oh, you're so lucky. I'm not lucky. No. I busted my ass. Oh, God, no. Yeah. That's what I did. It kind of makes me mad because I'm like, I saved up for this. <laughs> you know, I don't have someone like funding these trips. And or, you're living you in know. New York. I'm living yeah. in Brooklyn. And I did. Yeah. It's, it yeah. doesn't just kind of happen. Um, so it's, yeah, you, you kind of, you work for that stuff and it feels good. And especially as an entrepreneur, as, as a business owner, I'm doing it again. Um you, you, I'm going to do this now. Um, you, you work for it, and it's super satisfying. I'm going to put my hand down here. It's super satisfying. <laughs> I'm apparently Italian that, like, I need to, like, Just, and I'm not. Know. I'm German. Um, I'm German and Dutch. Uh, what are you? A mix. I just went over my 23 and Me actually with my grandparents today. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, we're a mix of things. You're you know, all found out place. Scandinavian, Italian. We're also um, potentially Portuguese or Spanish. Also a little bit of Middle Eastern. Okay. Which yeah. at this complexion, you know, didn't really think that was a thing. But, no. You yeah. Know, yeah, it was interesting. We are all, all over. Yeah, all yeah, over. Yeah, no, definitely. mine's basically kind of in one German Dutch is sort of yeah. like yeah. Okay. Pretty I get much. That. Yeah. Um, but oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah it's, it's a whole. That's a whole other. That's a whole other hour of talking about in, in the podcast and bloodline and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. um, and I guess nah, that's not really art because I try to think is everything art and that's yeah no that's just factual that's just scientific. It's it's interesting to learn and to you know see yeah. along the lines where you know someone might have been lying to someone about where they're from. Right, right, right. It's like no, you didn't grow up there. No, look <laughs> yeah. at the blood. The DNA says no. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before we wrap, uh, what, I've, what I found myself doing is asking people, what's their passion? So Cass, what's your passion? What are you, what are you most passionate about? Um, it doesn't I, have to be one thing. Okay. Um, I probably cycle back to storytelling. Um, yeah. You know, whatever format it's in, I've realized that that's ultimately what I want to do with my life. Um, I want to be able to tell other people's stories and I want to also be able to inspire however I can. Yeah. Um, just because, you know, there's certain hardships that I've gone through with my life that, you know, ultimately I want to come out the other side and be like, hey, you know, no one's really talking about this. Let's. Sorry. It's okay. Um, no one's really talking about this. Let's kind of go through this because, you know, I've certainly found myself in certain situations being like, I don't know how, you know, people kind of get to where they are. Yeah. So, you know, being able to tell other people's stories, I've always been fascinated by, you know, other people's creative energy or their passions the same yeah. way you're asking me. You yeah. know, it's, 
I always like to know what drives other people and however I can kind of bring that to light is something that really motivates me to keep going. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think that's, uh, I mean, that that's the sort of perfect summary of uh, a creative personality is you're able to kind of channel your own creativity through someone else's passion and creativity. And I think that's kind of why I like having that conversation with people. And what I found too, is that, you know, you meet someone in a bar and you go up to them and you say, Hey, what do you do? That sucks. Like not, not oh, everyone, yeah. not everyone wants to be like, well, here's what I do because <laughs> I'm not into it. So I've in, in a few cases I've changed it with complete strangers. I've mm-hmm. said like, Hey, how's it going? My name's Steve's like, what are you passionate about? And they're like, Ooh, yeah, whoa, this is, whoa, dude, you know. I just met you. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I know I just met you, but wouldn't it be cool if that was the conversation? Wouldn't it be yeah. cool if socially that was, I knew that was going to happen. That's what I was trying to turn off before. Uh, wouldn't it be cool if that was socially acceptable to say like, hey, what are you passionate about? Because that's what I care about. Yeah. I don't care about what you do. If what you do is what you're passionate about, that's awesome. Oh, like, that's really cool. The amount of times that I drunkenly ask my Uber drivers this. Yeah. Now, when I do take Ubers, because it's usually, yeah. you know, if I've had too many drinks, and of it's course. like, all right, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> Uber home. I'll always find myself being like, no, but like, what are you passionate about? Yeah. That's probably why I have such a terrible score, because they're like, I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> One star. You know, but yeah, I asking always, me questions. I find myself asking people that, you know, because I want to get to the root of it. It's like, I don't really care what you do right now, but like, what is something like, is this what drives you? You know, if not, like what is, you know, if you could do anything, like what would it be? And I don't know. I just, I find it fascinating to see like what other people get excited about. Because I feel like not enough people are going after what they are, you know, truly passionate about. And I think more should at least try. Like you said, if you want to go to New York, move there for a year, see what it feels like. Doesn't work out. Come back home. Wherever, wherever home is. Yeah. So Cass, where can people find you? Where can people find your stories? Where can they find your artwork, your photographs, all that stuff? Um, so you can find all of my stuff. Well, actually, I've got two separate things. If you're looking for my photography, I am on CassidyChristensen.com. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to leave it up to you to put that in a link because it is a yeah. long name. We'll get it all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, my Instagram's at Cass Christensen. Um, and then if you're looking for some of my writings and stories, yeah. um, kind of like Mishaps Abroad, I'm also starting to do a lot more travel photography tips on my blog. Um, you can find that all at Jet Plain Jean. Yeah. Um, across all social media handles. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then I'm Steve Walter, Steve Walter Photo. I think you guys know I have all my links and all my stuff is there, but I figure I'll, I'll mention it as well. <laughs> Just in case. Um, so we're going to go take some pictures. Um, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you, you got, for having got back me. from Europe and you came, we hung out, we <laughs> chatted, and, and we shared passions. Do you know what a hand hug is? I don't know what a hand hug so is. you put your hand up, right? Oh, boy. Other hand, other hand. Other sorry. hand? My other hand's hand. sweaty, though. That's okay. Hold that's all right. Okay. Sweaty hands happen. And then you just hug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's adorable. Thank you again, that Cass. Is, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>